the flashlight UG. When I come here, I've come to church first of all, thank God, and pray for more life. I think I was in Canada. Yeah, in Canada, I came from the Ghana. Many of them, I came from the Ghana. They are not able to go to the churches. So we came to reconnect and fight on all fronts to make sure that we make it fine. And what are your events today? Uh, out of this uh, prayer session, to connect spiritually with our brothers and sisters here. And Anything else you'd like to ask? Uh, we are fighting for freedom and we are going to get our freedom by the grace of God. Yeah, Ugandans in the diaspora have gone here, you're so powerful. Uh, you have the luxury of the right to protest the government right. We depend on you so much. We are fighting from different angles. When you fight back home, you fight from here because your influence is very intense. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to appreciate the Ugandan community here for organizing this and inviting us next And for the work that they do in the area. We thank God for that. I want to thank God for my life, me as a person. I want to thank God for the special people, the wonderful people that He has put in my life. If you will allow me a few more minutes, I will tell the church today that God has placed amazing people in my life. God gave me an amazing companion my wife, my best, best, best friend. That girl right there. She transformed me with love. The pastor, but as we were growing and going into the next phase of life, she said, Bobby, I trust you lead us. For me, that was a challenge. I thank God for my wife. I thank God for my friends. Uh, that elder brother of mine, Pastor, I usually don't talk about him. That man there is my elder brother. When our mother passed away, he paid my school fees. But most importantly, he showed us the way we spoke together. He was a father to me. When I grew up, he became my friend. And now I get very humbled that he allows me to lead him to be his leader. Bro, I don't take you for granted. And even in the times when I was not politically conscious, when it didn't matter to me, so much what was going on around my country because I was comfortable. When I did not understand the times, he pushed me and he offered a lesson. Pastor, in 2016, after Dr. Vesige's election was rigged and I was angry and I wanted to throw in my heart and do what I can do, I decided that I didn't have enough education and I went to law school. There was this new teacher that was recruited. He had just finished his master's degree from Harvard. I met him at law school. I met him at university in our constitutional law class. His name was David Lewis Rubongoya. <laughs> we became friends. He was my lecturer, but I was older than him. 
<laughs> Only now he has become older than me because he has lost his hair. <laughs> we became very close friends. And because of the situation, we left school together. We ran away from school, the teacher and the student. <laughs> <laughs> Through those conversations, we connected with other friends like Joel Senior. We were with him, we were with Lewis, watching Joel. That day, we were reading a funny Kawi sing. So we said, Man, this guy thinks like us. We met Joel and we went on connecting with other people, and that's how we came to be. So I want to thank God for those wonderful people that he has placed in my life, that he continues to place in my life, the Dr. Kaumas, the Jose Makolas, the Zaharas, the Mulongos, all of them. You people look at me and what I say, I'm only a representation, shining but behind me is a whole lot of amazing and intelligent men and women that support me. And I believe it's the work of God that those people are with me. But I'm very glad that over time we've been able to communicate and connect with all of you. Thank you for understanding the times like Pastor says. Thank you for understanding that this is not about me, all the friends and the close team that we're working with, but it's about us. Thank you for understanding that you know, it's not personal. Okay, Pastor Romo Tunyinga, you know, Savon Sabide, also Because, Pastor, we are angry sometimes. But because of the situation back home. But we are not about spreading hate. We are not about spreading anger. And see a fate to Roma. Maybe get a mass of it to Roma. Like I was saying yesterday. Yes, the money we lose to corruption alone, 10 trillion every year. In six years, that is enough. That money alone, because for that money, it's over because it's Okola kilometers. Kakaga, Kurimuaka, Mumiaka Mukaga, and Wodoza Uganda Zonazi Vazitari. That's just the money lost in corruption. So these things we say, not just for us, some of us can come to Canada. We're just thankful that even you people that are away from home, you connect with us, you welcome us. We don't take it for granted. To the friends that I have here, I see my brother, my good friend, Emperor Lando is here. I see my brother, Zach, 40, or Zach, 40, 20, 14 years old. I'm very honored to meet you today. at Thank you, friends, for connecting with us. Spread the word. Pastor, are you getting into me? But most importantly, Pastor, the greatest among you will be a servant. Friends, I want you to know that we are just servants. And that is what we want to bring back home. Servant leadership. We want to make sure that leaders become servants and people become the true masters. So I'm always glad to get the opportunity to say it again and again and again and again. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. But again, I will make another request once again. Pastor, please pray for us so that we make our case. Right now, as we speak, Pastor, among the things we pray for, we have a brother called Wambale, we call him Western Prince. He was abducted yesterday. A drone came and picked him from his house. We don't know what he's going through right now, but we pray that he leaves so that we can be able to see him and hug him again. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you President.
Pastor Ron, Pastor Chris, Pastor Becky. Uh, Pastor Becky might even fire me if he recalls that somebody said, not once, not twice, but pray for me, and then you didn't pray. <laughs> this is our mandate as a, as a church, as a, as a people of faith. This is our mandate. We know things happen when we pray. That man, Nehemiah, but one of the things that he did before he let anyone come out of his mouth was to pray. That God will give what that, that will sort so that the become of Yayogira. Begin the Kuanga, yes, means of Kawoma or Yabi Sibins, and they have just very warm. Sometimes we get it warm, let's be on our warm ever. But your personal prayer and desire that God gives you that salted tongue to know the right word to speak for every moment. So I'm gonna ask my prayer people to come as a way of also concluding this moment. But for us, we believe, uh, 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 my friend, I might have to call you back here, uh, Mrs. Chagoran. Make all the pastors of this church to have a moment of prayer. We are praying a special anointing of, of, of just even peace. But that the Bible says that we are to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, we are to make our requests known. But that doesn't end there. Then it says, in the God of peace, who controls all peace there is for anyone to ever have, he says he will in return give us peace. And it's not just ending there. He says the peace he gives, even our minds cannot comprehend. I pray that on you, that amidst anger, you know, anger is the easiest emotion to, to express. But if you were to have a moment, which is because of my other work as a, as a therapist, when you have a moment to sit with people in a context of safety and they really truly share with you what's beneath the anger, then you hear bigger things than even anger, like despair, like betrayal, like frustration, those big things. But for us as human beings, it's easy to to show anger, but really, if somebody cared to, to really listen to what's beneath the anger, you'll find a lot of things. How can you rest when a dear beloved brother is murdered? How can you rest as you shared with us yesterday that you were sure that the bullet that took somebody you cared for was meant for you? How can you rest? You can't rest. But yet, as you sit on those big emotions, we pray for peace. A very personal peace for you, for your dear wife, for your beautiful children. May we stretch our hand. I want to ask all of you to do the same. Stretch your hand as a symbol of agreement. This is a symbol of agreement. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this particular moment. This moment in time. The Lord, as we take a pause to acknowledge that in and all of us, we are not able to even take the first step if we don't go with you. So Lord, we pray in a very special way this day that as your servant, as your child has desired a prayer for peace, that Lord, as he navigates all the challenges that are coming his way because of the resolve that he has made in his heart to see some changes, that Lord, you would give him that peace that even his mind cannot comprehend. <coughs> We know that you keep every word that you release. So you have promised in your word that when we come to you in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will in exchange give us a peace that even our minds cannot comprehend. Oh Lord, I claim that peace. I claim that peace onto your servant. I claim that peace onto his dear wife, onto his family, onto all the friends that surround him, that sacrifice sometimes unspeakable sacrifices. Lord, we pray as we continue to commit them into your hands. 
that you will surround them with your protection. You surround them with your provision. But above all, you surround them with your peace. That peace that no man can give. Lord, we thank you. For everything that you have delivered them from, we thank you. For every scheme of the evil one you have delivered them, we thank you. But we even thank you for the burden you have put on their hearts. We know it is not in vain. For you have said of you in your word that nobody labors in you and they labor in vain. You have said that the greatest among them all will be their servant. The Lord as he continues to serve with all the people he's serving with. I pray that he will be counted among the great because he served. Not because he was known, not because he did go to school, but because he served. That will be counted among those that understood the times and they knew what to do. We pray for, we pray for peace in his heart, first of all. We pray, for, we pray for peace in his family. We pray for peace in his very close circles. The Lord, as he sits on something that he may never even uh, share in public, that he will be so confident that there is not a time where you are not there with him, that you will continue to reveal yourself to show up so big to him that he will know in every single one of those moments that you were right there. As you showed up for Nehemiah, as you showed up for Joseph in very unlikely ways, as you showed up for Moses in very unlikely ways, as you showed up for Joshua in very unprecedented times, I pray that your presence will lead him. As Moses refused to take the first step if you didn't go with him, I pray that he will always refuse to take the first step unless you go with him. So today we pray that you go ahead of him, go ahead of his family. You have heard his prayer, you have heard his cry for peace. That even amidst anger, amidst anger, amidst despair, amidst frustration, amidst betrayal, amidst real life threatening moments, that he will know that you are right there. May you be his shield, may you be his, may you be his protection, may you be his guard, may you be his, his citadel. May you be his wall, that nothing formed against him will prosper. We pray this with so much confidence, because you are a God who hears. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. To beseech you to continue to pray. Do not, don't underestimate the power of prayer. We have seen kingdoms fall, we have seen kingdoms crumble at the hand of God. And for you and I, the way we access God is through prayer, just as Nehemiah did. But do that for your personal circumstances. Don't allow times to pass you by. Uh, it is my understanding that there's some ladies who have something, if this is correct, we have maybe two minutes for this. Do we have the ladies who, if this is not the moment, that's okay. We can have the final blessing and then we're going to move to the other side of the, not yet. Okay, not yet. Okay. So what we're going to do here, I told you at the beginning that uh, you are sitting on somebody's bed literally I want to remind all of us here of a very special thing that is happening uh, in this church next Sunday uh, thank you for watching our channel please don't forget to subscribe like share and comment